to Season 2, Episode 66 of One Man's Opinion. Today I am reviewing Connecticut Repertory Theater's production of Lisa Loomer's Row, directed by Tanisha Dugan and running through March 11th at the Naif Catter Theater at 820 Bolton Road in Storrs, Connecticut. Roe takes a hard look at the life of Norma McCorvey, the woman who may have been better known as Jane Roe, the plaintiff in the landmark U.S. Supreme Court case Roe v. Wade. In 1973, the court, in a 7-3 ruling, made it unconstitutional for states to ban abortion. Loomer's presentation of McCorvey's life is unapologetic, and depending upon your worldview, particularly your view on abortion itself, may ruffle your feathers. Loomer points out at the beginning of the play that history is an ever-changing thing as the people who record history write from different points of view with different information. In this case, we're talking about the autobiographies of McCorvey, played by Audrey Latino, and Sarah Weddington, the lawyer who represented Norma in Roe v. Wade, played by Annie Tolis, where both women have different memories as to what and when and how things happened. This is all part of the sticking point to the story, as Norma actually had very little to do with the legal case that was Roe v. Wade. The reasons why Norma is not utilized are debated between the two women, with the truth being likely somewhere in the middle. What is a fact is that Norma agreed to the case with her as an anonymous plaintiff, hence why the case is called Roe v. Wade, not McCorvey v. Wade. The first act mostly covers the legal battle of Roe v. Wade, with some interesting moments where Tolis and various defense attorneys address the Supreme Court with actual audio of the Supreme Court played over the theater's audio. It's a nice touch, but I felt that the audio was a bit difficult to understand at times due to the aged quality. It might have been better to have an actor record the dialogue over and play that back instead. The second act follows the aftermath of Roe v. Wade and the rise of Operation Rescue, an anti-abortion group that ends up setting up shop next to the clinic where Norma and her girlfriend, Connie Gonzalez, played by Lori Vega, work. Led by Evangelical Minister Philip Flip Benham, played by Andrew Ryan, Flip and the organization attempt to convert Norma to Christianity. Here's where history goes funny again, depending upon who you want to believe, as Norma does actually converts to Christianity and becomes a spokesperson for Operation Rescue. But, on the other hand, on her deathbed, she says she only did it all for the money. This all comes back to what is the tragedy of Norma McCorvey. Throughout the entire play, she is used by people around her. Her mother, Mary, played by Catherine Berryhill, who coerces her to sign over guardianship of her daughter, Melissa, played by Lucy Wimet. Sarah doesn't carry much empathy for Norma, as her focus is a bit more on the big picture with Roe v. Wade than Norma's personalized problems. Then there's Operation Rescue, who uses Norma's familiarity as the face of the anti-abortion battle. This all makes most of the characters in Roe to be generally unlikable, and muddies the water regarding the origins of the abortion rights law that existed for about 50 years, as everybody's selfish intentions take the fore, making Norma the expendable tool to reach their goals. The one exception would be Connie, who becomes more and more helpless as everyone from pro- and anti-abortion groups, as well as politicians and the media, use Norma to meet their ends. The performances in Roe are overall decent, being that this is a university production, everyone except for the equity hires are in some form of educational development regarding their acting skills, so I won't go too hard on them for their work. Latino and Tolis are the ones who lead the show, though I like Latino's snarky attitude with Norma and Tolis's primp and polish as Sarah, neither feel like they have the necessary life experience to truly flesh out these roles. There's good foundational work in their acting, but I wanted that last push to make their performances exceptional, and maybe it just isn't something they're ready to find with these roles. Vega, on the other hand, is the standout performer of the play. She really stands out and shines as the beleaguered Connie. Though Dugan's direction is overall good, there were some really long scene transitions, especially in the first act that could have been better choreographed, especially with the choice of having cast members change costumes on stage versus doing it backstage. I think the costume design by Adrienne Williams, coupled with the scene changes, could have all been done with a little more fluidity. 
I liked Elizabeth Olsen's generally simplistic scenic design, especially the first act Supreme Court design with the simple columns and red curtain with the nine chairs lined between the columns. Coming into the theater, it immediately sets the scene well before the play begins. It was smart and simple, and I liked it. I think Roe is going to be a bit uncomfortable for people as Loomer shines a light on the face of who Jane Roe or Norma McCorby was and the tragic world she had to live through. Though she isn't that likable of a person, the play does allow us to empathize for her in the midst of abuses she received from both the right and the left. Was she responsible for many of her abuses? Absolutely. But she was also human and had to make choices out of self-preservation more than anything else. The play is going to aggravate some people and satisfy others. That all depends on your political points of view and whether or not you feel the play is advocating that view. I definitely get the sense that it can go either way, depending on how passionate you are from that point of view. I mean, I can easily see a pro-life audience member thinking this play is advocating their point of view just as much as a pro-choice audience member, or having the inverse effects on both. Is that intentional on Loomer's part, or is it a fault in her writing? I couldn't tell you. But it could create some interesting post-show conversation, and that I'm all for. But I am one man's opinion, so be sure to leave yours in the comments below. If you want to see Roe, I'll leave information on how to get tickets in the description. You can support my channel by liking, sharing, and subscribing, and click the notification bell to be alerted to future reviews. My next review will be the National Tour of Hades Town. Thank you for watching, and I will see you at the theater.